Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, guys? It's Filthy, and I'm back with another video. Today we're looking at a Season 20 guide for the Necromancer. This is going to be how to go from Level 1 all the way up to GR100. So it's primarily aimed at casual players. It's a complete zero to hero guide. We're going to be dropped off with a challenge with bag, bit of determination. We should sail past 100, even with only 800 Paragon. We're going to do it in a very tanky, very easy to play way. So I'm going to show you all the builds that you need to transition into. So should be pretty good. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what to spend your challenge with bag on as the Necro. We're going to talk about some items you can find on the way up to 70. We're going to talk about what to do at 70 so what to spend your materials on so again blood shards and dbs we're going to look at the legacy of dreams gem because a lot of players i think are thinking maybe to just jump straight on that we'll look at the tragul set talk about the pros and cons of both those methods i'm going to show you a nova tragul build that will do gr 75 in about three minutes so you'll get primals unlocked very quickly i'm then going to show you a legacy of dreams version of the build which will do gr 85 88 again in about three four minutes without any augments and without much juicing at all and then finally we're going to show you the push version of the nova build which will clear 100 pretty easily with about eight nine hundred paragon i think we did 103 with about five minutes to spare on ptr so pretty powerful build then we're going to have a chat about mages which is going to be the xp meta farm i think for the solo necromancer really good for gem ups as well so again we'll have a chat about that and then maybe have a little bit of a chat about thorns so if that sounds up your street yeah. stick around as always guys welcome to anybody who's new to the channel hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so i've got plenty more d3 season 20 build up material coming so hit notifications and that way you know when the videos are ready and as always a thumbs up is appreciated and does motivate me to make more of these videos and also, is this kind of video style that you like? Do you want me to do up to GR100? Or do you like the more traditional starter guide? So jump in the comments, let me know. So kicking us off, the Necro gets a pretty good time with the Challenge Rift bag. We're going to upgrade two-handed scythes. There are only four options. So the best one for me is the Blood Type Blade. We get 400% increased damage on Death Nova for every enemy within 25 yards. If you get this, you can mask a bonus on really high difficulties because this multiplier scales really well. The only downside is you outgrow your items very quickly and that means that you're going to get squished if anything touches you. So I'd recommend going to the Halls of Agony because skeletons are pretty slow, they're easy to manipulate in place and you'll just blast them apart. Obviously it is a little boring just quitting the game but it will be the quickest way to get there. So by all means you can just riff with this, it is a pretty good item anyway. Now one place I would avoid is the Fields of Misery because the Spear Chuckers will wreck you. So as I say, I've done this in the past, it is pretty good. You're just going to die a few times whilst you level. And obviously don't do this if you're doing hardcore. Now the next best I would say is going to be the Nair's Black Death. We get 100% increased damage for every poison skill used within 15 seconds. Easy to get 300-400% on here. Necro's got some pretty good poison skills. So most of the generators have got poison on them. Dislocation's a good poison ability. What I would say though is, is you don't want to stuff 6 on your bar because you're just going to give up too much utility. So I'd aim for about 4 and it is pretty strong. But also bear in mind guys Necro's got some pretty awful poison abilities. So I wouldn't use it with the golem and I wouldn't use it with the mages either. Both of those are pretty poor. But really good multiplier, 300%, 400%, really really nice. Now next we've got the shadow hook this will just give us a double damage pretty much to everything so really easy to build off what the game finds or what the game drops you rather so again really nice multiplier now the last one is for me it's going to be the maltorius the multiplier looks really good because it's 700 percent bone spear is quite thirsty on essence it's single target unless you pick a specific rune on it and i just find that really it's not that good so this is the worst one definitely and blood tide is the best now we do also get blood shards to spend what i would do is if i got the blood type blade you don't need to worry about corpse explosion gloves uh, death nova will absolutely smash trash and corpse explosion isn't single target anyway so i wouldn't roll for the gloves but i would roll for corpse explosion gloves on anything else so grasp of essence just pull it up uh, it is in the armor too used to playing ptr where everything's on the same screen so Grasp of Essence, we get a multiplicative damage increase to Corpse Explosion. Obviously it goes really well with Shadow Hook because the two multipliers together are very good. Just select the Poison Rune if you get a Nares. So again, Corpse Explosion's got a couple of Poison Runes, so pretty good. So I would go for those. Now, 
If you blow your whole shards on this, you've got 86% chance of finding them, so it is pretty high. And obviously if you get the Maltorius, well, you're gonna want this anyway, because this will be better than the Bone Spear for you. Now, if you are lucky and you do hit the Blood Tide, I would save my shards until level 30, and I would go for the Corpse Whisper Pauldrons. There are two shoulders in the loot pool at 30, of which this is the second one. So you have, I think, a roughly 62% chance of finding them. So, you know, it's more likely than not you'll find them. We're going to use them in the Nova build for single target. Corpse Lance is a really good skill for the Necro. It does a lot of damage. And obviously having the ability to multiply it through is very handy. You can keep them on your character, even at level 70. A level 30 pair will do just fine until you find yourself a pair of 70s or you could always slap them in the cube if you want to get the full benefit of the multiplier. Now things that I wouldn't roll for would probably be the circle ring. Now skeletal mages are amazing for the necro, but when I tested the blood set, I found that the blood mages didn't hit anywhere near as hard as the nova. So you've got, I think, 37% chance of finding this if you spent your entire shards on it, because there are two rings and they cost 50 per pop. So your bio mage, you can go for it. It is good for leveling, but chances are you're gonna miss it. So I wouldn't do that. Now, another thing that I wouldn't do is I wouldn't bother going for an iron rose. So let's just find that. Uh, so this will give us a free Blood Nova. You would think, yeah, that's going to be really good. Bear in mind, you're probably going to have a two-hander for most of your leveling experience, in which case this is going to end up fairly worthless. When you do get to 70, it's one of only four off-hands in the pool, so it's pretty easy to get anyway. So again, I wouldn't bother with that. So as I say, Corpse Explosion Gloves if you get anything other than a Blood Tide, and if you miss that, I'd go for a Corpse Whisper Pauldrons. Now, other item that you can get that's quite useful is Leoric's Crown. It's in the loot pool anyway, so it is quite common to find whilst leveling. But let's say you do have some shards left over, I would try and go for that. So obviously box off your multipliers first, but this is quite a good item to find. Now in terms of necro skills whilst leveling, I quite like bone spikes because you can generate essence at range, so that's quite handy. You probably want to use skeletal mage in some form. Skeleton archers are really nice, they're quite good. Obviously you're going to be on death nova if you've got a blood tide, you're going to be on poison abilities if you've got an airs but also good ones to look out for. Devour is really good to get um, corpses consumed, so that's quite nice. And also Command Golem, Flash Golem. This will give you a pile of corpses, so if you're using Corpse Explosion Gloves, definitely want to get this one on here because it is really nice. Land of the Dead, I'd probably stay away from whilst leveling. The cooldown is just absolutely massive and you're not going to have much access to it. Command Skeletons, again, you know, pets are quite good for the Necro and Corpse Explosion, as we say, if you get the gloves. So there's quite a lot of really nice skills, and I would also say Blood Rush is probably pretty good for mobility, and then Potency will help you out with toughness as well. Also, Bone Armor gives 30% damage reduction. So Necro, for me, I think it's got some really good skills for leveling, so it is pretty nice. Passives-wise, you want to get Fueled by Death on. Try and pair that if you can with something that's consuming corpses. So if you're using Corpse Explosion, that's fine. If you're not going Corpse Explosion, then you can just put Devour on your bar. That will give you some move speed and it will help you get up there. Again, Standalone really does help buff up the toughness. Again, just build around with whatever it is that you get. So again, Overwhelming Essence would be handy with the Shadow Hook. But honestly guys, there's so many really nice passes for leveling. It is pretty easy as the Necro. Now, when you get to 70, the set on offer is going to be the Trakul's Avatar. Now, the two-piece Blood Rush gains the effect of every rune. Not really going to help you out with damage terribly much. The four piece is going to give us essentially double our life. Again, not really helping with damage. Now the six piece does give 3,800% for life spending abilities. So the upside is it's a fairly decent multiplier. Downside is you're tied to blood spending abilities. Now a lot of people have suggested going straight onto Legacy of Dreams. I've seen that in a lot of comments on my fastest start video. 3,800 I reckon is about the same as a rank 50 Legacy of Dreams gem. Now you will get that gem either on your second or third rift, so that is pretty handy, but you are going to have to level it up. Now, when I say 50 level gem, that's with about half the slots being ancient. You know, it's not going to be that hard to find ancient items. You know, obviously bad RNG will make that slower, good RNG will speed it up, but that's kind of what the trade-off you've got to say. Do I want to go out and do the season journey, which you know may take an hour or two depending on whether you're grouping and how quick you are at it? Or do I want to just go straight rifting and look for the Legacy Dreams gem? 
I don't think there's particularly much advantage to ours. I think they are fairly similar. So if you do fancy just binning off the set, by all means you can do. But I'm going to assume most people will do it because it is the guaranteed 3,800. You've got to do it anyway for your cosmetics. So there is an argument to say that you should get all that stuff done. Now one thing you can do as well is when you get to 70, if you are going for the sets, because you're obviously guaranteed legendary items as well, you can just basically get the blacksmith to craft the sages set. So this will give you double DBs, and again, it's legendaries in the slots. The extra 250 on the stats will be quite handy as well. So if you're going the set route, I would do that. And if you're doing Legacy Dreams, obviously, you can maybe make one piece, but you don't want to make two. Now, obviously, it does cost crafting mats. You're going to be extracting stuff into the cubes. Again, you just need to be a little careful with that. But I probably would just about make a Sage set at 70 if I was going the, the set route. But... I probably, if I do roll Necro, will just do Legacy Dreams because I just personally find that more fun. I like building what the game gives me. Now, in terms of the Dracul's build, that we've got some footage in the background now. What I would say is it's not that hard to put together. You will require a Rogue, so you are going to have to do some bounties because you do need a way of killing single targets. But you could always put Corpse with Pauldrons in the cube until you get up to that point. So in terms of what to do with your materials when you get to 70, you're looking for multipliers in the cube. So DBs should be spent on upgrading two-handed scythes, one-handed scythes. You're looking for obviously Shadow Hook, looking for Tragul's Corroded Fang, you're looking for the Scythe of the Cycle, you're looking for a Blood Type Blade if you missed it. And if you're going Legacy Dreams way, you probably want to get an Air's Black Death as well. So all those things are multipliers. You're going to look for convention of elements for rings. So again, once you've boxed off all the weapons, I would then move on to upgrading rings. So convention of elements and crispins are pretty handy. Then you're looking to fill out the jewelry. So again, you're looking for a flavor of time possibly, or a Johnstone necklace. Uh, where's that gone? The Johnstone, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't extracted one. But again, that would be another good find. So that's kind of what I'd be spending DBs on, pretty much multipliers only. Now as for shards, I probably would roll for an offhand just to get a legendary one boxed off. Then after that I would be going for the Corpse Whisper Pauldrons, again looking to build out that Corpse Explosion, sorry Corpse Lance just in case you didn't have it. And then after that I'd probably be going Belts, looking for a Dainty's Binding. So have we got one of those? Previous page. So. Yeah, Dainty's Binding will give you double toughness, so that would be pretty handy. And you could also pick up a Witching Hour, which may be useful in the interim. And then lastly, I'd be going for Nemesis Braces. But as I say, guys, the build links are all in the description, as are all the YouTube guides for these. So, you know, that's kind of how I'll be spending my mats when I get to 70. But just make a little list, cross the items off as you get them, and you should be able to get your build up pretty quickly. So actually, guys, I decided it's just easier to show you. So this is the GR75 Necro. So the key is yellow is going to be how you spend your DBs, and then red is how you're going to spend your shards. So DBs are one, Blood Tide Blade, two, the Scythe of the Cycle, three, a Tragul's Corroded Fang, and then four is a Shadow Hook. Now all four of those are pretty easy to get, there's only four one-handed sides and four two-handed sides in the pool, so nice and easy. Then what we've got is number five is going to be Crispins. Now you can also get a COE, so that will do you fairly well until you find a Crispins, so you've got two rings that you can hit. And then six in the build, I was using the Flavor of Time. A Johnstone would be better, but the build did function with the Flavor of Time, so either one of those two will be okay. Now in terms of shards, you can spend one on the Iron Rose, because obviously that's very essential. Two is going to be the Corpse Whisper Pauldrons, again pretty essential. Three, I've suggested Dainty's Binding just to beef out the toughness because obviously Necro is pretty squishy. Then what I'd say is four, you're going to move on and try and pick up a Crispies just in case you haven't already got it. And then five is going to be a Nemesis Braces. Now any other braces will do whilst you're waiting for these, they're just to make it quicker. Now one thing you also need to remember guys, you have to do some bounties to pick up your Rogue in the other ring slot. Now I'll do the same for the Legacy Dreams version, but other than that, back to the video. Oh, and here's the skills for the build as well. So if you want the full explanation, as I say, YouTube guide is in the description. So once you're transitioning into your Legacy Dreams version, you're then going to start to look for other supporting items. So Stuart's Greaves are really nice. They'll make you run very quickly, great for bounties. You're going to be looking for Leoric's Crown. That's going to give you extra cooldown. You're going to look for an Aquila Karas. That's going to give you a doubling of toughness, provided you've got enough essence, which again is all explained in the guide. Find yourself a nice pair of gloves, anything with double crit will probably do for the Legacy of Dreams. 
you know cooldown would also be nice but again you don't need anything specific just any ancients will do same for the trousers for that build so again fairly low gearing requirements most of these pieces aren't terribly essential now as for the legacy of dreams version you're going to build off the trags but what you're going to do is you're going to have to get a nares black death so that is going to be db spend number one number two is then going to be a unity because you're going to want to do a second layer of toughness i would be spending shards on one an akila Karas, two a pair of stewart's greaves three i'd then look for the unity if i didn't have it with the db upgrades remember you need two and your token of invulnerability for your follower and then after that i would be going for a leoric's crown just to help out with gold for t16 and cooldown or health but this will do 88 pretty quickly in about three three and a half minutes so that's be how i'll be gearing that out and similarly these are the skills for the gr8588 legacy dreams version again build guide is in the description then when you move over to the GR100 push build, you're going to find that stone gauntlets will be very handy. You're going to have to create a strength character to get these. You can't get them on the necro, so you can't upgrade them in the cube, and they've got really low chance of dropping in the game generally. You need also to pair those with the ice climbers, because that will remove the negative effect of the stone gauntlets. So those two things go together. But other than that, the push build is pretty much the same as the speed build. You're looking to use most of the similar items, and obviously by the time you get your Legacy Dreams gem ranked up, you start working your way through GR19 upwards, you should be filling this build out pretty quickly, I think. And then lastly, in terms of the Legacy Dreams push build, the Stone Gauntlets are highlighted in blue because you need to get them from a Barb or from a Seder. I would be spending any DBs on a Johnstone if I hadn't found that already. I would be spending my shards on a pair of Ice Climbers, number one, number two, Gonskin Breaches for extra toughness and three a pair of path and defenders again boosting up toughness and obviously by the time you get to this build most of these items you will have found natively anyway again if you want to have a look at the skills for the gr 100 plus easy pc push build they're on screen now but again full build guide is in the description and the youtube video so that would be the transition i'd make a decision to go either the track set nova then into legacy dreams nova speed then into legacy dreams nova push and then that should do you to 100 now, Mages is pretty tricky to set up because you're going to need items like a Circle of Nihiluji Vol. You're going to need it with four seconds, preferably Ancient. There are lots of more supporting items for the Mages, like a Requiem Serra Plate's pretty handy. You know, Reaper's Wraps obviously is easy to get, but again, can be handy for that kind of build. So again, I'll link the guide and also some footage on the screen just to show you the GR90 two-minute build absolutely incredible for solo xp farming incredible for gem ups so i will be looking to get that set up and when we do get onto the season i probably will roll necro so i'll make a push guide on mages which unfortunately mages is just paper thin that's you know that's the problem with it it is probably a bit more powerful than nova maybe not this season we'll just have to see how it goes they're going to be close but mages is definitely going to be a lot harder to play so nova that's why we've gone for it for the 100 obviously the question really will be what will be the top necro build next season i've got a slight suspicion and a bit of a worry that it's going to be thorns again obviously thorns will benefit from the cube being open and it's it's not a play style that i particularly like i don't enjoy fishing i don't enjoy the kind of passive nature of it but if there's enough interest i will do a guard on it for the season but we'll have to see nova is going to be powerful mages are going to be powerful so Fingers crossed, I'm hoping that one of those two builds beats out Thorns, but obviously, as I say, it will be buffed up by the season, so we'll just have to kind of see. So that's it, guys. I hope you found this useful. The stats hopefully will let you make some informed decisions about what to spend your stuff on. As I say, all the links are in the description, so if you want to just look at the D3 planner for any of the builds that we've talked about, they will be in there, and the YouTube guide in full if you want to go and know how to play the build a bit more. But other than that, guys, I've been The Filthy Casual. I wish you all the best for Season 20. Say your prayers to RNGesus, and I hope you get what you want on opening night. And I hope your primal is a pretty good one when you do bust 70. I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.